Next uh, talk is again from Moritz uh, from the University of Heidelberg. This is together uh, with authors from University Technical University of Berlin. Yes. Please, Moritz. Yeah, so this is a, a joint research project, IDA VGI, which, which I'm working on currently, and it's together with the remote sensing imagery uh, um, group at the TU Berlin. And um, so we're joining, or we're using OSM as label data. And uh, we thought, or I, as the OSM part of that project, thought, well, we should give something back to the community. So this is um, a community um, talk. So um, what we did in the project was that we worked on multi-label remote sensing images. So uh, on the left side, or on um, this side, you can see um, uh, an, a simple multi-label image where we see a dog and a cat. And we, if we don't look at singular pixels, but look at larger areas in remote sensing images, we can have the same for remote sensing images where we have multiple labels for one image. For example, in this one, we can see a forest, we can see build-up area, and we can see agricultural area. So we did that. We um, did uh, OSM in different, or we uh, diver, uh, classified OSM in different classes, and then aligned these or the OSM tags to these classes and um, generated labels for remote sensing. Um, and we see that, first of all, we need to see if, if OSM was fit for that purpose, and it is. OSM was fit for the purpose. Um, our filter, of course, highly impacts the accuracy, but 80% of our labels in the experiment region we use, which is Southwest Germany, were correct. And you can see that per class, our accuracy is even higher. So we have an F1 score of uh, at least 92 or 0 0.92 for uh, the single classes. And you can see here all the green ones are the manually evaluated patches. And you can see the green ones are the good patches and red ones are the bad patches. And we can see some clusters in areas that are not well mapped. So how can we feed back that information that we, we, we find in the study back to the community? Um, so first of all, the goal of the study is, is machine learning. So we want to predict these labels automatically on remote sensing data um, with the model. And um, Models are, or machine learning models on remote sensing are normally used to have clean data, so they are labels, so they are not used to have some uh, labels that are wrong. And um, so we tried to use, or the uh, TU Berlin used these uh, models, or applied these models with OSM data, which is, as you saw, 20%, so to say, wrong. And you can still see that um, OSM, or um, the, the model still outperforms OpenStreetMap. Um, so we artificially deteriorated our OpenStreetMap to simulate areas where there's worse quality than in the example region. And we can see that the model still performs well uh, on this side, up to uh, a very high amount of wrong labels. So um, as long as we have enough labels, we can get, get a good machine learning model and we can predict um, labels for the images quite well. So now, how do we use this information? So we have a model that predicts well classes and we have OpenStreetMap that obviously or seem to be not so good in that area, as at least we simulated it, and um, how do we leverage that? And so the idea was, uh, let's do a community feedback. So we have now these labels, we have these areas where we know the OpenStreetMap may be wrong, um, so we want to feedback that. So first of all, this is a kind of saying thank you to the community, um, but then what we did is we um, compared the prediction of the model with the prediction by OSM, so to say, um, and if there was a disagreement, um, we then extracted that patch, localized where in that patch the error is, um, extracted geometry, and fed that back to the community via task manager. So this is a, a proof of concept. So it's, um, I will show you a working instance in a moment. Um, but we try to uh, um, uh, develop this more and more. Um, but what we highly, or what we were take took care of, is that we don't trust the model blindly, and we do no automatic editing. So we're not striving for that at all. We think that the community should have full control and that there should always be a human in the loop, just as Jennings said in, in, this morning. Um, and so that's why we chose the tasking manager uh, framework. So what we do is, with these geometry, we create um, these task, tasking manager projects that have all the information in them. So we know where it is, we know what type of OSM data we have there, what type of the, what type the model predicted, so what the disagreement is, and what we say, well, this could be this and this tag, how about you check that for us? Um, of course, there are other platforms that could be used, like MapRoulette or Street Complete, um, but uh, I think Task Manager was, first of all, it was uh, simple to, to set it up, and also I think it's very well suited to the case. Um, also, although taking it apart, uh, away from the hot original uh, idea. But you can try it out. Uh, there's a working instance currently running. Uh, just remove the TM from the back. Uh, that's a wrong, uh, an error on the slides. 
So if you go to idealvgi.georg.uni-heidelberg.de, you will find a working uh, tasking manager and you can see the results of the example variation we uh, calculated and see how the project looks up. But it's working on OSM Sandbox because I want to have a security layer, so you probably have to sign up for the Sandbox first. Um, yeah, and the code is, of course, uh, also uh, publicly available. So you can redo all the analysis we did. Thank you, Maurit.